Okay, this video is going to talk about finding the electric fields um, associated with two-point particles, but you could apply it to more point particles using the same techniques if you wanted to. So for our first problem, uh, I have two-point charges um, plus one of plus tw 25 nanocoulombs and one of 15 nanocoulombs. So my plus 25 nanocoulombs is here and my plus 15 nanocoulombs is here and they're separated by a distance of 0 0.5 meters and what the problem is asking us to do is calculate the resultant electric field strength at the midpoint between the two charges and so I can see that these two charges are separated by half a meter so the midpoint between them this part's going to be 0.25 meters and this point's going to be 0.25 meters if I divide this segment in half. Okay, so now to find the electric field um, from each of these, um, I'm just going to into it. Uh, in order for me to find the electric field at this point, I need now need to find the electric field of each um, <coughs> part of each charged particle um, at this point. So I say that the electric field, so I'll start with the electric field coming from the charge at point x first, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times our charge divided by our distance that we're thinking about. And so that would be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and over our charge of, so our charge is 25 nanocoulombs, but I'm going to convert that to coulombs. So it um, is the same units as my epsilon, not my permittivity to free space. Um, we don't need to convert the meters. The meters is already correct, 0 0.25 meters. And we'll square that quantity. And we see that the electric field coming from point X at the midpoint here is 3600 newtons per coulomb. We now need to find the electric field coming from point Y, so I'll do the same thing. EY is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught over our charge and squared. I write out our constant. Um, our charge is 15 nanocoulombs, which I'm going to convert to coulombs divided by our distance which is the same as before because it's the midpoint between the two square I see that the electric field at this point is 2200 newtons per coulomb okay so now that we've found the the strength of the electric each electric field that is happening at this point we now need to add these together and you need to remember that these quantities are vectors so we need to add them together like a vector so you can see that y is going to be pointing this way of 2200 newtons per coulomb and our x is going to be pointing this way and it's going to be 3600 newtons per coulomb and so because um, my charge here, my 3600 newtons per coulomb, is pointing to the right, I'm going to say that's positive, so 3600 newtons per coulomb minus, and this is to the left, so I'm going to say it's negative, 2200 newtons per coulomb, and I get the answer of 1400 newtons per coulomb at the midpoint. And because this is a vector, I need to indicate the direction. So I'm going to say 1400 newtons per coulomb ah, to the right. All right, so now let's try a problem that's a little bit harder. So in this problem, it's asking us to calculate the distance from x at which the electric field strength is zero. And so the setup is the same as before, with the same charges in the same places. This problem is telling us that if I, um, to find a point where if I find the electric field strength of x 
and I add it to the electric field strength of y at that point, I will have zero electric field strength. So there, if I were to place a point charge at this point, it wouldn't feel a uh, pull in either direction. Okay, and so if I rearrange this, that means that I'm looking for a place where the charge, the electric field strength of x is equal and opposite to that of the electric field strength of y. Okay, so this is kind of a difficult concept to think about because we really don't know, uh, we don't have a, a value specifically to plug in for y. So what we're going to need to do is figure out a way to express the distance from y to this point that we don't know what it is yet um, in terms of x. And so what I'm going to say is that from x, so we'll say x is this point, and from x to this point, we'll say it's hypothetically there, we're going to say that it's distance d, and we don't know what this distance all the way to y is, okay? But we do know that the distance of this entire segment is 0 0.5 meters. So we know that whatever this distance is, it's 0 0.5 meters minus that to get to y, okay? All right, now all we have to do is plug in these values and solve for d to find our distance. Okay, so if we say that our charge, I'm just going to write out our, our charge of x divided by 4 pi epsilon naught divided by our distance to the point for x, ah, distance of the point to x is going to be equal to negative our charge of y divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, the distance from y to get to that point squared. Okay, we plug in our values, so it's um, 25 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs for our charge x divided by 4 pi epsilon naught um, times our distance of r squared, which our distance to this point is going to be d which is equal to negative, uh, our, our charge at point y is 15 nanocoulombs, so times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. And for this one, we know that the distance is 0 0.5 minus d squared. Okay. I have 4 pi epsilon on both sides, so that luckily cancels out and we don't have to worry about it. And now all I need to do is cross multiply and solve for d. So I see that, let's see, I would get d squared over 0 0.5 minus d squared. Ah, I'm sorry, the square is on the outside, not the inside equal to 2.5 over 1.5. If I cancel out these factors too, okay, I can take the square root of both sides of this equation and I get d over 0 0.5 minus d is equal to 1.3. I solve for d and I find the distance is equal to 0 0.28 meters. It's the distance from x where it adds to the electric field of y um, to equal zero is 0 0.2 meters to the right from x. All right, so that was kind of challenging. Now let's try a different kind of problem. So in this problem, we're not being asked to calculate uh, in a straight line in between x and y. Now we're being asked to calculate the magnitude of the electric field strength at point P in the diagram. 
So we want to know what the electric field strength is at this point here. And so we know that the electric field strength of X is going to point in this direction from our point X when it's acting on P. And we know that the electric field of Y is going to point in this direction as it um, acts on point P. And if we do a little bit of math, we see that these are right angles. And so we can find the electric field strength um, using Pythagorean theorem um, if we can find the amount of the magnitude of each of these vectors individually. So let's start by finding uh, the magnitude of our x vector electric field. So the magnitude from um, vector x acting on point P is going to be equal to same as we had before, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught over our charge um, Q of X over the distance squared. Um, we could solve for that. So Q of X is equal to 25 nanocoulombs times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, if we convert it to coulombs. Our distance from X to point P is 0 0.4 meters. So 0 0.4 meters, no conversion necessary because it's in meters. And we see that the electric field um, from X acting at point P is equal to 1400 newtons per coulomb. If we do the same thing for Y, e, e Y acting on P, um, we have 1 over 4 pi, I'm sorry, I forgot my 4 pi epsilon naught down here, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times R Q of Y times R squared. Um, equal to our charge of Y is 15 nanocoulombs, 15 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times our distance from Y, which is 0 0.31 meters, or 0 0.3 meters squared. All right. We multiply all this out, and we see that the electric field strength coming from Y is 1500 newtons per coulomb. Um, so, 1500 newtons per coulomb acting that way, and 1400 newtons per coulomb acting that way. Um, we can add these two values together using Pythagorean theorem. So. 1500 newtons per coulomb squared plus 1400 newtons per coulomb squared to get the resultant electric field strength and we find that 1500 squared plus 1400 squared gives us 2100 newtons per coulomb is the magnitude of the electric field at this point. Okay, we don't need to find a direction because we were only asked to find the magnitude in this case, so that's where we'll stop.